So some of the database functionality that we can make use of when we're working with uh, FME is, is all these things. So a yeah. sequence, the sequence column, um, Oracle calls it a sequence. SQL Server calls it an identity column, Postgres calls it a serial column, then you could have come up with the same name for them all. Yeah. But uh, what we can do is, for instance, it's very easy to work with these kind of um, kind of uh, columns. And in fact, we could go back to our Postgres example here where we were having to create that primary index, right? And we had to put a counter transformer in here to create our unique mm -hmm. primary indexes. Mm -hmm. But we can actually get rid of that transformer and we can go in here to our um, destination and just turn that primary index attribute into a serial. Oh wow. And so that serial then will be generated for you automatically and we don't even have to hook anything up to it. Yeah, and then when we run that. it, it will automatically uh, generate that serial for us and we'll be able to see it in our database. Perfect. And the same thing's possible in SQL Server. We can use that um, an identity field or Oracle's a little bit different. It's, it's handled a little bit different but it's basically the same idea. Yep. So uh, database triggers. Triggers can be done used to perform all sorts of power, powerful processing. You can use a trigger to execute an FME workspace mm -hmm. or even to pump something through to an FME server task. So if you just want to spend a minute on what FME server is compared to desktop. Sure. And then, yeah, yeah. Desktop prim primarily is, a, is the authoring environment and then, and then you can run these jobs in a, as part of a batch system. What FME Server does is enable you to share this work this workflow um, across your organization. It also um, enables you to automate things. Comes with scheduling capabilities, and um, and from a database standpoint, you know one thing we could do just thinking about that QA flow is it would be very easy to uh, have a workflow where somebody in the field creating that QA drawing we saw could even email it to FME Server. Mm -hmm. FME Server would run the workspace and then email them back a uh, a response. So That's right. so it's FME Server is all about automation. Um, there's other things, real-time sensors, all that stuff, but but primarily it's about automating your tasks and making them available across your, your enterprise. Yeah, and the beauty of triggers is that you've really got some tremendous power there for doing this kind of stuff. So here we've set up a very, you know, so I consider it to be a fairly complicated trigger because I'm not really great with triggers, but uh, yeah. here, it, it, what it's doing here is actually submitting something to the job submitter on our one of our running FME servers. So yeah. you can yeah. see that's done. So some, every time a waterline is inserted into our database, this trigger fires up. So that's one use of triggers. Another use of triggers might be to, um, when you're inserting data into one of your production tables, you want to have a delta table created. And so you can use triggers to create delta tables by mm -hmm. putting together a trigger that looks something like this. I think you could even use triggers to send tweets, can't you? Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think so. So stored procedures are nothing that you can use from within a workspace or um, actually use um, a, a stored procedure to run a workspace. And we've got a little um, stored procedure here that's in our SQL Server database. And it's just doing a join of a couple of tables. So we could uh, put that kind of execution of a stored procedure into a workspace. Mm -hmm. And I think possibly I even have one that does that. Go back to my slideshow. I probably have a pointer for it. Yep. And so what we're doing here is using a SQL create SQL creator transformer to execute a um, a stored procedure. So very simple little bookmark here. SQL creator that we didn't actually look at before, and what it's doing is executing a SQL statement. So oh. it's executing your stored, stored, procedure. Oh. stored procedure. Very Perfect. simple. And yeah. you can um, tell it which attributes you want to expose. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, so also continuing on with that, we've got transactioning. So all of our writers will work with transactioning. So you yeah. can um, tell it how many features you want to write into memory or read into memory per transaction, how many you want to write around yeah. a commit. So you can commit on every feature. You can commit on every thousand features. So yeah. you can yeah. do rollbacks, that yeah. kind of stuff. So yeah. all the stuff that the enterprise uh, database people like to know about. Yeah. We also have multi-geometry support, so there's, um, again, you'll get a couple of little workspaces that show how to deal with multi-geometry multi yeah. columns. Yeah. Um, that's quite uh, interesting to see how we put it together using aggregates and named geometries. So we, mm -hmm. we line up the names of the geometries in the feature with the name of the column that is held in the database. Yeah. 